for literature review, you know what distinguishes a research paper from other kinds of assignments that you might have been writing? What distinguishes both of them from each other is the component of literature review. So in almost every other paper that you write, you must have arguments in that paper, you know, in a kind of essay-like paper. But a research paper that you write for a course, you must have a literature review. So I think it is obvious from the title of it, it is a review of literature. But the question is, which literature? So the literature review that you will write for the paper in this course will be the review of the literature, which is secondary in nature and which is relevant to the topic on which you are writing your paper. Now, literature review itself is not a complete paper. It is part of it. So what is the role of a literature review? Why do we write it? We write literature review in order to establish a research context. Well, what kind of research context? You might remember I gave you the example uh, the other day. I gave you the example of or analogy of uh, a conversation that you are having with some other researchers sitting in a room. Okay, so imagine a situation where you are sitting in a room with a few other researchers and you all are talking about one primary text. Say it is Pride and Prejudice. Okay, the novel Pride and Prejudice. So you all are talking about that. Now you are there uh, as a participant in the discussion. But after the discussion is over, somebody asks you to describe in writing what happened in, in the discussion process. Now, you will be essentially providing a report on what each person in the room said. Okay. you would be very much uh, concerned about what you said yourself in that conversation. But here is the point. Whatever you said, here is the point, whatever you said cannot be totally meaningful to the people outside that room, it cannot be totally meaningful unless you also describe very accurately and honestly what other people said in the room. Why? Because whatever others said in the room, they provide a context to what you contributed. Writing a literature review is like reporting what other people said on the topic on which you spoke or on which you plan to write your paper. Now, it is almost obvious that if you are talking to a group of people like this, discussing one particular 
primary text all of you spoke on that particular literary text in relevance with each other if all of you did not speak on that primary text staying relevant to each other then the person who was irrelevant will not make any sense so the conversation can continue only if each participant in the discussion is almost talking about the same thing but of course from their own perspective so why do i need to say this thing i need to say this thing because when you review literature on any particular primary text you will come across you know hundreds of books or hundreds of articles on that particular topic but you need to be very specific in what you include in your literature review now if you for example put the title pride and prejudice in google or in on any online library you can try it right now tell me how many results do you get if you have access to any online library or google scholar tell me how many responses you get to the phrase pride and prejudice yeah did you do that Okay, so they are lot, right? So just on JSTOR, you no know, JSTOR is uh, is not a random search engine. Rather, uh, you know, it, it's it's a kind of database, right? Which only includes authentic material on a particular topic, right? Now, out of forty nine thousand results, of course, you have to be very very specific. you cannot include all this literature comprising 49000 articles in your literature review so what you have to do is you have to be very specific so remember the analogy of you talking to other researchers in a room okay so you can be specific by reminding yourself what each one of you is exactly talking about well yes it is pride and prejudice but what is what it is in pride and prejudice that you are discussing what is it in the novel that you are discussing are you discussing the plot structure of the novel or characterization in the novel or the class conflict in the novel or it is the gender discrimination or the gender differences in the novel and even you tin down 
a theme of this kind or a point of discussion of this kind you can be a little more specific by saying that you are discussing the uh, gender difference from the perspective of or from the theoretical approach of discourse analysis so for example if you look up the results for uh, plot structure in pride and prejudice you will come across a little less number of resources okay now when when we talk about plot structure or the structure of the plot in any particular literary text there are various methods to discuss it okay one of the methods comes from a theorist whose name is bakhtin so if you say that uh, if you say bakhtin a bakhtinian analysis of pride and prejudice probably you will come across just a few number of resources which you can count on fingers maybe 5 6 10 10 right so what is again the point is that you have to be very specific in your literature review so do not randomly pick every other source whose title matches with the title of your primary resource okay because if you go by that then your literature review will not make any sense so the literature review is not literature review of the literature which is written on your primary text rather it is review of the literature which is written on what you want to discuss in your primary text so you have to be very specific now as far as the number of resources are concerned for your paper that you are writing i am asking you to have at least five resources in your paper in your literature review so please take take down this requirement you must include at least five resources in your literature review okay so for the specific city if you look at this part of it so five resources types it could be books or journal articles and we will discuss the summarize and synthesis part just in a few minutes uh and of course you uh, you don't have to evaluate you don't have to write the evaluation of the sources but you will definitely evaluate the sources beforehand we have already discussed that uh and you do not need to provide any subheadings uh in the uh, in the literature review okay are there any models out there yes there are i can share with you a few articles where you can find models of literature review okay so it looks like there is so in literature review we will be explaining theory and how it applies to society of that time and and what if we find no relevant data related to our thesis statement okay so aniba uh, literature review is not exactly uh, explanation of theory okay explanation of theory is your theoretical approach okay uh and i don't know what does it mean uh, its application to the society of that time i think you are talking about uh, textual analysis that comes later in your in your paper we can we can talk about that separately when we are at the stage of arguments okay how you develop your arguments uh so explaining theory is 
part of uh, your theoretical approach. Okay, we will discuss it after literature review. Uh, so, so this is not literature review. You know, literature review is review of the research paper. So, see, you are writing a research paper. Before you, other people also have written literature review. Uh, sorry, also have written research papers, almost on the same topic on which you are writing a research paper. In the literature review, you summarize the research of other people on the same topic or on the same primary text. So, is your question answered, Aniba? Yes, sir. But if we don't find any data related to our thesis statement, I don't think that is possible. Then your research, then your research, then your topic is not researchable. You need to change the topic. It it doesn't happen. Okay, you can uh, you can specifically ask this question with reference to your own paper, and I can uh, I can let you know what kind of literature will come under uh, the category of literature review for your paper. Okay, all kinds of topics and all kinds of thesis statements do have literature to be reviewed. Okay, so if you if you feel about your own topic that you can't find any data on that, let me know and I'll 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 help you find the data for that. Okay, so when we are on literature review, as I earlier said, you need to be specific and you need to narrow your topic as much as you can so that uh, you can reduce the number of relevant research articles to be reviewed. And you need to make sure also that the sources that you are using, they are as new as they can be. Okay, so for example, if you're working on uh, an 18th century novel or in 18th century text, a lot has been written on that text in the last 200 years. Okay, so don't just include those articles in your literature review which were written, say, 100 years ago or 50 years ago. Okay, we should try to use the resources as new as possible. So when a research article written maybe in last two, 10 years is more relevant as compared to a research article written say 50 years ago. So here are the strategies to write your literature review. We already discussed these things just now, but let's have some final uh, you know, points in our mind. Find a focus, right? So think in terms of your own topic. What is the specific focus of your research? And then find the material relevant to that particular focus. Now, not only you need to find the focus, but when you write the literature, convey that focus to your reader. For example, if you are writing your paper on Pride and Prejudice, you can begin your literature review by saying, that Pride and Prejudice written in this particular year has extensive literature available, uh, available which, which has been published in the last 150 years. But for this particular paper, I'm going to focus on just the plot structure of the novel. Moreover, then you can say, uh, the plot structure of this novel uh, has been studied by a number of researchers. And then after this statement, you can start picking 
those researchers one by one. Right? Of course, you already have reviewed the literature. Okay, this is this is an important thing that you have read that literature already. Okay, you have chosen for yourself the five articles you are going to include here. But you are conveying the focus to the reader as well. What five resources you pick down and what is your what is their focus? Now, while you produce a summary of those resources in your literature review, it's important to plan an organization. The overall organization of your literature review would be like this. There will be an introduction in your literature review. There will be a body of your literature review. There would be a conclusion or recommendation of your literature review. The introduction, introductory line of your literature review will be a general line which introduces or conveys the focus of your literature review to your reader. In the body part, you will discuss at least five sources. In the conclusion statement, you will write what is the output of your literature review. I'll come back to these points in more detail. First, let's talk about the order of your resources. If you have five resources in your paper, I recommend uh, you write those resources, you, you, you review those resources in chronological order. So the article which has been published earlier should come first. And an article which has been published later should come later. So you need to look for the dates of their publication. So these are all ways of organizing, but I just suggested you that you should arrange them in chronological order. Okay, all other are relevant, but for for this paper, you should use chronological order. Now, when you start composing your literature review, and you have thought of an organization, here are a few. Uh, guidelines that you should follow. Throughout your literature review, whatever point you make, you should use an evidence for that. What is an evidence? Evidence is a small phrase from that uh, research paper whose literature you are writing. But at the same time, be very selective. So a research paper roughly has a length of 20 pages. So do not try to include everything from those 20 pages in your literature review. Just use important points. I already said use quotes, but use them sparingly, not too many quotes. Summarize and synthesize. Okay. So you already know what summarizes, but you also are supposed to synthesize the information. That is, you should put that information together in such a manner that it should be relevant to each other. It should be in connect, it should appear like an organic text. For example, if you are using five resources, as I told you, and you write review of those five resources under your literature review, when a reader reads your review of those five resources, your review should look like an organic whole in itself. It shouldn't look like five separate sources. It should, like, it should look like one piece of writing. How can you do that? You can do that by keeping your own voice. So remember, the literature review is not there to bury your voice. It is to empower your voice. So basically, you maintain your own perspective. 
or you maintain your own voice. In other words, you have to tell what you think about these resources that you have cited. So what does the writer A say? What does the writer B say? What does the writer C say? That is why we have the literature view. In literature view, we are not as much interested in exactly hearing directly from those writers. You are interested in hearing from you what other writers have said. Therefore, you should not let your voice be drowned by the other writer's voice. Maintain your voice throughout. And the best trick to do that is to quote as little as you can. Okay. So that you paraphrase the ideas of other writers and rewrite them in your own voice. But, but you have to be very careful when paraphrasing. Because very often when we paraphrase, we stop distinguishing between our own opinion and opinion of the other writers. So when we are paraphrasing, be very clear that the views that you are writing down, they are views of other writers. So credit their voice, credit their opinion very clearly. So once you have your literature review ready, it's very, pos uh, it's very important to revise it many times. Okay, because your literature review is basically based upon the opinion of other writers, therefore, it takes a little time for you to make it into an organic whole so that it should look like one piece of writing written by you. Okay, so it's very important that you revise it to change it to give it a consistent flow throughout. And of course, you need to have works consulted, okay? Usually, uh, when you uh, write your literature review, you do not need to have uh, a list of works cited separately. There is only one list of works cited which goes towards the end of your complete paper, okay? But don't forget to keep a record of all the works that you consulted to write your literature review. You will need that list towards the end of your paper. Okay, so to summarize in your literature review, each one of you is going to review at least five sources. When you review your five sources and when you write your review of those five sources, you have to find a focus convey that focus to your reader, what your literature review is going to be about. And when you write your review of uh, the available literature on your topic, uh, be very specific, be selective, uh, and paraphrase other writers. Do not quote them too much. Maintain your voice throughout, okay? And then finally, end your literature review with a concluding statement. So you should have a kind of introductory statement of your literature review. It says what this review is going to be about. And then the body of literature review where you have the opinions of other writers. And finally, a concluding statement which should say what is the output of your uh, literature review. Any questions so far? No, sir. Okay, now take down the word limit. So you are writing, you are planning to write a 2500 words draft. Okay. So I will suggest you to write uh, an introduction of 200 words for that. And uh, uh, Maybe it, it, it can exceed up to 300 words. So let's, let's make it 200 to 300 words. And then a 700 words literature review. So let's make it 500 to 700 words.
so you have intro of 200 to 300 literature review of 500 to 700 and then you would have arguments of 1000 to 1200 words and then you will have conclusion of roughly 200 words Okay, now in the literature review part where I'm asking you to write 500 to 700 words. See, so the ideal organization probably you can write away, pin it down. For each resource, you should, you should use uh, 100 words. So, so the review of each resource should be of 100 words. Okay, so if you have 100 words for each resource, you will have 500 words just for summarizing the sources. 100 words, roughly well, 50 to 100 words for the introductory statement and 50 to 100 words for the concluding statement. Okay, now, uh, uh, so let's practice it a little bit. Now, let me, um, let me open the Word document right away. So I hope you can see this, this page. Okay, so you are writing a literature review, right? Now, the, the starting statement can look like this. So you say this paper focuses on the plot structure in Pride and Prejudice. I will review the literature on the thought structure of the novel. Okay, so this is the first, you know, kind of line for your literature review. Now you can you can start from the next line okay so you you might say so now you have the author's name okay you can name the article if you if you want you can give the title over here Plot of Pride and Prejudice is multi layered. All right. And then you can continue to complete your review of author one. All right. Once you are done with your review of author one, you can write away begin stating author, author two opinion. However,
okay sorry i was away a little bit however author to argues that the plot of the novel is not exactly multi layered but it is multi voiced okay let's use the word multi vocal author 3 disagrees with both of the above writers and instead says that the novel does not have a conventional plot rather the plot is okay so rather the plot is simultaneously multi layered and multi vocal right now uh, so so far you saw i wrote about three authors opinions right but i said you need five right so you will have an opinion from author 5 and then uh, sorry four and then author 5 all right now you have to write now the concluding statement that is is going to be a challenging statement now the concluding statement basically of literature review is also and that is going to be very very important word for all the research that you do in future is also called the research gap your concluding statement is the research gap now this is how we write it you would say that in light of the above research uh sorry above literature review i can uh pause it pause it means to take a position or i can contact i pause it that none of these authors have studied the plot of pride and prejudice as a fluid plot i therefore contend that the plot of the the novel is in constant flux and cannot be reduced to any of the definitions given by the authors mentioned okay so can you confirm if you can see everything on on the on your screen yes sir okay now what you have done over here is you began with the general statement but this general statement is well general in the sense that it gives an overarching statement 
about what your review is going to be about. Okay, so the paper focuses on plot structure. Therefore, the review will also study just the plot structure. The review will study the literature just on the plot structure and nothing else, right? Now, you might have noticed the use of the transitions over here, like however, and then over here I say that author three disagrees with above two authors. I might say about author four, that author four has a similar opinion, but in different words. Now, I am using these expressions in order to create a synthesis, to synthesize all the information by all five authors into one organic whole. If I don't do that, then opinion of each author will stand isolated and will not appear to be connected with each other, right? Now, who synthesized this information? I did as a writer. Therefore, my voice overrules over here. Even if this part of the paper is based upon the opinion of other writers, I subject their opinion to my understanding of these writers, creating a synthetic whole out of their opinions. And over here, this part is called, let me write it over here because this is going to be very, very important for you. It's called research gap. Now, you reviewed the existing research over here and you noticed that in the available published research, there is one perspective about plot structure, which has not been studied previously. And you as a researcher is going to fill that gap. You don't have to use exactly the same language I have used, but you have to say something of the similar kind. So over here, I said that in light of the world literature review, I posit that none of these authors have studied the plot of Pride and Prejudice as a fluid plot, okay? So you might have noticed the word fluid is nowhere used, okay? I therefore contend, now this, you write your contention in the beginning of your paper as well in the introduction part, but this is then another point where once again, you come up with your contention. Over here, you have kind of, you know, established the research context for your contention. And you can confidently say that this is something which has not been studied previously. And you can say, based upon the evidence of the literature review already published, uh, review of the literature already published. So I therefore contend that the plot of the novel is in constant flux. So fluid and flux, they are the same thing and cannot be reduced to any of the definitions given by the authors mentioned above. Now, if you think of it,